We're going to talk about the TCP selective ACK process and the way that we can determine if that process is going to be used is when the session initially gets set up. When the client sends the sync request to the server, in this case we see the max segment size, 1460 bytes, we see SACs are permitted, so the client is telling the server that it wants to use selective acknowledgments. Again, that is a more efficient TCP retransmission mechanism. We see in the sync act coming back from the server the same properties. Uh, we see in the options that it wants to use, same 1460 byte segment size and that SACs are permitted selective acknowledgments. So selective acknowledgments in their basic performance process, they, they make the retransmission process of TCP more efficient, meaning that if I have a large TCP window and the first or second packet in that window process gets dropped, you don't have to retransmit the entire window's worth of data. You can just send the missing piece or pieces. So the way that's accomplished, I'm going to use the expert here to make that really simple to see. It uses what's called a REAC or a, um, duplicate ACK. So here we can see a duplicate ACK and it's telling us sequence number 30393. Now I'm going to go in and take a look at that frame with you, but you see there's our sequence number 30393. The expert observer is telling us that is a REAC. Now the way that the retransmission process works with SACs is the other side won't just retransmit based on receiving the first SAC. It must receive at least three and you'll notice here there are three more that come in. So we'll take a look at this first one. We'll see here the ACK number that we talked about is 30393. The SAC is saying I have received from sequence number 33313 to sequence number 34773 but I need you to retransmit the data from 30393 to the sequence number of 33313. And so if we were to use our calculator to figure that out it would just be a matter of putting in 33313, subtracting 30393, we get 2920. We divide that by our max segment size, 1460, and we can determine that two frames, packets, segments, have been dropped or are missing from the server's perspective. So it's telling the client, I need for you to resend from sequence number 30393, the ACK, and if we take that number 30393 and add 1460, we can also determine the next segment number that's going to be retransmitted, 31853. So after the client receives those two, we'll see that process happen right here. It, it retransmits sequence number 30393 and 31853. So this is where the client has received the three or more, and in this case we see three or more, we see more than, we see at least four duplicate acts, 30393, 30393 so on all of those. So the client then says, okay, I hear you. I will go ahead and retransmit, which it does. It resends those those two missing segments right there. Three one three eight five sorry, three one eight five three and three zero three nine three. And the question of the hour is what causes TCP selective acts? And normally we start troubleshooting from our physical layer in the network up. So we're looking for cable problems, CRCs being logged at the switch interface, potentially even the old speed duplex mismatch problem.
look for um, somebody discarding frames along the path, uh, whether that be the switch, the router, a firewall, a gateway somewhere in the middle. Somehow the packet that is leaving the client is not reaching the server and so the server is saying I need for you to retransmit that. So from the network troubleshooting perspective we want to go look at you know the physical layer and start working our way up the stack to figure out why those frames segments are not reaching the server. So I hope that helps in your understanding of TCP selective acknowledgments and thank you.